In this video, we're going to discuss a Chrome Natural case. Chrome Natural is an FP1 product that we have developed that is loaded on our fixation base uh, rather than a traditional uh, FP3 hybrid type case. We developed this because there seems to be a movement towards uh, preserving bone, uh, delivering crown and bridge, uh, not leveling the bone, especially on younger patients. You know, this is maybe mi middle-aged patient. Got to be careful what I say, but uh, middle-aged, um, you know, late late 50s, mid 50s, late 50s, and uh, this patient is. Um, you know, just missing some anterior teeth, it's, it's challenging because there's a bone defect uh, in the anterior. But, uh, uh, but as we work through this case, you'll notice that uh, really the, the right thing to do is to preserve bone and not just flatten the ridge. So let's walk through the case. Uh, the records that come in are very, uh, very typical for a chrome case for a you know, digital full arch templated type uh, procedure, which is uh, upper lower casts, um, usually a centric occlusion bite, uh, palate is included as for a backup denture, and uh, a CBCT scan with the teeth apart, and then photographs. Uh, you know, chrome cases really, uh, really have simple, straightforward records. Uh, cast or STLs, comb beam, and photographs. And the photographs that we ask for are full face, full smile. We love to do smile simulations for these cases. Uh, center, left, and right. We like left and right retracted in occlusion pictures. We want to make sure that what we are seeing on the articulator is exactly the same as what we're seeing in this photograph to make sure the case is mounted correctly. Uh, this case, uh, I believe, was not opened with the, with the current uh, occlusal scheme. Uh, current occlusion, current bite, and then from that we imported the files into a software to set the teeth so that we are um, setting teeth and giving a new smile based on the face and based on the uh, based on the patient's soft tissue and hard tissue. As with all of these cases, we do um, an, an exorbitant amount of work uh, before we meet the doctor online, uh, and analysis, articulation, uh, bite verification, space verification, verification of uh, adequate bone uh, for planning as in a pre-evaluation, pre-meeting. And then we meet the doctor online, and we go through that process, uh, live online meeting with these cases, uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and we go through every aspect of the case. In this case, uh, uh, we used a blue sky plan, and um, you can see all the files. I mean, if, if, you, if you're familiar with the software, you'll know that these uh, hints, these, these, these lines that are, that are diagrammed around the patient, those are all different layers of STL files that are brought into the software for analysis. So it is a painstakingly pro uh, um, extensive process to analyze these cases. And then, uh, then we go through each implant, uh, manipulate them to make sure they're in the right spot. Uh, this patient has, as I mentioned before, a bony defect in the anterior. So there were some small implants that were placed uh, up here in the, in the pre-maxilla. All right, so we go through the entire case, make sure the bone reduction is, uh, is accepted, the teeth are in the, in the correct position as the doctor wants. Now you can see our bone reduction level uh, uh, traditionally may have been this high uh, in order to flatten down the, the ridge up to this defect, and that's a lot of bone reduction. So instead, the doctor opted for FP1, and we're just going to place implants in sockets where available, uh, implants up high here, and deliver an FP1 prosthetic, and we'll just go through some of the, um, some of the files here. So this is, of course, step one is the pin guide. That is what holds the prosthetic, uh, sorry, holds the fixation base in place. Let's put the fix ba fixation base here. There we go. So the pin guide delivers a fixation base, just like all chrome cases. And then the pin guide is removed and uh, remove the, the wafer there. Fixation base is in. And in this case, uh, the osteotomy guide will go in. 
uh, after tooth extraction. So let's uh, let's remove the teeth. Turn off the cylinders. Osteotomy guide will go into uh, into here. We'll show uh, an image in a little bit of the socketed model. Socketing is very important in these cases. And once the implants are in, turn the implants on here. Good. Osteotomy guide comes off. In this case, there were two osteotomy guides. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One osteotomy guide, and then there's uh, the green. There's a reinforcement for the uh, for the prosthetic, and and then the prosthetic. And the prosthetic is loaded on the fixation base with these three legs. All CAD design. Okay, what does this look like in reality? Uh, when the case is printed and it is uh, prepared for surgery, uh, one of the things that we have to do is uh, place the prosthetic on the model. And what, what the goal is, is to adjust the sockets until the prosthetic is accepted, until the prosthetic meets this pontic area, this socketed area, etc and to not reduce the prosthetic very much because you don't want the prosthetic to be thin. So this is all calculated uh, how much um, bone should be reduced in these sockets. Um, so we perform that at the laboratory. We mark it with uh, red Sharpie and the, and the doctor will simply copy that, mimic that during surgery by placing the prosthetic in the position and adjusting bone until it seats. Now there may need to be a little bit of prosthetic adjustment, but you don't want to you don't want to adjust the prosthetic too much uh, because then it's too thin in those areas uh, for final restorations. So it has to be a little bit of a balance, uh, but mostly socketing, mostly adjusting the bone. Um, picture of the osteotomy guide. You can see how high this osteotomy guide is off of the bone. That's just a prolongation of this particular kit. Uh, but also we make these arms extended out so that they go around the bone so it doesn't get hung up on bone because it's not going to be removed. So this is what it should look like um, when the prosthetic is seated. We put a little bit of pink on this one, on the prosthetic, uh, and then there's also a uh, rapid appliance. You always want to do the rapid appliance, the second pickup, right? With all chrome surgeries, you recommend doing a uh, first surgical guide pickup and then the rapid appliance the duplicate pickup um, there's going to be more coming down the road very soon on only picking up the rapid appliance and doing an extra oral conversion on the prosthetic we'll roll that out soon now you'll notice that this looks like it's not seated it is the plungers are out so i believe that uh, the bone had to be reduced a little bit for the um rapid appliance to be seated so it will be seated fully just like the uh, just like the prosthetic here now with every surgery we make what's called a surgery mat uh, this is a neodent case it's a surgery mat there's a there's a qr code here so that you can watch a video on a, on a, about the surgery mat what it's used for uh, but this has cross sections of the fixation base uh, how the muas will be rotated in the in the mouth uh, and the trajectory of the implants. This is uh, just an image of the osteotomy guide so that you can see, visually see in the mouth what they should look like in their respective positions. Uh, and then some images of the scallop guide. And then cross sections of the implants. So this is in a 360 view and this is just a simple cross section. Uh, we uh, place the platform size and we place the, uh, and the tool, the instrument to use from the guided kit. Um, let me show you the original. So this is the original surgery mat, before, you know, as a, that we print. And then there's also the surgery mat, which is placed on the counter in the surgical suite. And uh, and the doctor will simply place their implants here, the 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 actual implant. There's number 16, number 14, number 13. Place the implant here. Place the abutment here and then place two sets of temporary cylinders here. And this is uh, probably 25 inches wide by 12 inches tall, and it is a tool for organizing the case. Makes it very simple. Instead of a 
instead of just a big tray full of parts to sort through during surgery. Chrome natural surgery. Let's go through the surgical process. The first step is to anesthetize the patient and then uh, seat the pin guide to make sure it fits and then it's removed and then don't have all the images so you just have to kind of visualize this then the pin guide will come out and then you will lay a labial flap just a labial uh, in this case there'll be a crestal incision and then lay the flap forward then the pin guide goes back in with the fixation base and the doctor will drill you can see these are our green pins which correspond with our green step-down drills all drills from Chrome are now uh, step down. So they're two millimeter, but the tip, uh, the four millimeters at a tip is a 1.8. And in the maxilla, it's just wonderful. Uh, you drill all the way transcortical. Uh, you bury the drill all the way in and the pin will stop about three millimeters shy and you just simply tap it in with a surgical mallet and then you know you are secure. So now you can see why uh, why the doctor chose FP1. Uh, perhaps this bar would have been a little bit lower and a patient has a very high smile line, so maybe a little bit lower, but this would have been a very aggressive surgery uh, on an FP3. So the fixation base is seated. Uh, one of the wonderful things about Chrome, uh, one of the main things about Chrome that separates it from plastic guides is floating guide technology. Notice that this guide does not touch bone. You do not have to extract the teeth, level the bone, fit the guide. The, te the, the, the two supported guide delivers the metal. There's no undercut, there's no fitting. It's all held by pin trajectory. There's really nothing else like it on the market. And that is a patented pending uh, process. Once the, once the fixation base is in, then the teeth are extracted, and then the doctor places the uh, scallop guide. The scallop guide will help the doctor determine where to scallop the bone to accept the prosthetic and the implants. Um, so every time there is a uh, gingival zenith area here, the burr goes in and preps, and we, we went back to a full wrap design lingual and labial. Now this does not go deep into the vestibule like a plastic guide. It's a, it's a very shallow metal. Because it's metal, because it's strong, it does not have to go deep. The site's prepared. The osteotomy guide goes in. The sites are drilled. The implants are placed. Abutments are placed. And then at this point, unlike other chrome cases, there's no carrier guide. Uh, the, the prosthetic goes directly to the fixation base as opposed to being mounted on a carrier guide. And the doctor will place temporary cylinders. Now on a natural case, this the doctor's fortunate because these are all straight implants and that'll make restoring the case fairly simple. However, straight implants don't always mean uh, straight uh, multi-unit abutments. I'm sorry, they don't always mean straight um, temporary cylinders. They can still be angled uh, because of trajectory of implants. As you can see here, this this is the, the case and it's just the implants in space in blue sky. They're all straight, every one of them, but you can see the, uh, the divergency between them. And when you have this divergency between the implants, then this manifests itself into uh, temp cylinders that are also divergent. And therefore, you may not have a passivity. Uh, for seating. So instead, seat as many straight uh, parallel temporary cylinders as possible and then seat the prosthetic and then from the top down seat the others that are uh, the other temporary cylinders uh, in the real divergent implants. And by doing this, you should not have to adjust the prosthetic very much. There's a little bit of adjustment here on the lingual. I believe there was some adjustment on a couple of others, but the, but very little. The, the doctor called me after the surgery, and there was very little adjustment. And then you just simply backfill all of the implants. You don't need to pick up some now and some after um, because of trajectory. Just seat them all from the occlusal. Uh, this implant was left off, and that's okay. I'll pick that one up later. Uh, but that is the process for picking up 
uh, a natural case. And if there, if if at this point this case is not seeding fully into these uh, into the arms into the chrome locks, then what is holding it up is the question. More than likely, it's bone. It could be a little bit of tissue here, but more than likely, it's bone. And this should be tried in. Uh, you can use this prosthetic, or you can use the uh, the rapid appliance. Uh, but you just keep adjusting bone until it is passive, until it seats, and then you pick it up. So in this case, uh, the doctor used our block out gaskets. One, two, three, four, blocking out the uh, the multi-unit abutment. So you sleeve these over the temporary cylinder, and then you um, place the prosthetic, uh, put in the temporary cylinders, put in the blue plugs, and backfill. And you can see that this one, this first one here, this is the prosthetic uh, that will be that the patient's wearing during integration healing and then the second pickup here is the rapid appliance you can see there's no pink and this is the tool to go to final in six months this prosthetic will be sent in uh, with a reline impression with some adjustment equilibration add some composite to it uh, pick up that implant you see this is the patient's prosthetic they're going to wear home this was removed. That's going to be a little bit too much of a cantilever. I think they, they removed that. Um, I know they did. Uh, but in six months, just put a temporary cylinder on this implant and pick it up and give us a soft tissue, a bite, a posing, and we make a prototype for a final. Now, now things can't be simpler than that. The patient gets to go home with their prosthetic and send in an exact duplicate. And day of surgery uh, really, really looks nice. I mean, just a lovely smile. And of course, the patient is going to pull their lips up and they're going to look. This case turned out really, really nice. Uh, it's really important to have an expectation for the patient that, that um, this is not a glamorous surgery, at least at the junction of the prosthetic and the tissue. There's going to be sutures. There's going to be some bleeding. There's going to be gaps. Hopefully, this is the smile that they focus on. Uh, and this will be rendered uh, uh, better as the healing happens and as we transition into a final restoration. So that is the process of a Chrome Natural uh, with some tips. Uh, I, I hope this helps uh, any doctor that is going to perform this case. Uh, and thank you very much for watching.